if ministers started by setting a damn good example. Speaking of one of those. Madam Speaker. Um, before I address some of the substance of the bill, Madam Chair, I just want to spend um, a minimal amount of time responding to some of the claims made by the previous speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, it's very rich um, for that member uh, to offer this side of the House uh, lectures on ethics, on uh, on, on things that may, may or may not be I, shambolic. I just, I just, just warn the member that all, member, all members of this parliament are honourable, so be oh, careful. Oh, yes. I'm not questioning the member's integrity at all, Madam Speaker. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but I do find it ever so slightly rich uh, that that member can, given uh, the track record, and I'll come to the specifics about that, Madam Speaker, question our track record with the public service uh, and, and our track record in terms of integrity. First of all, Madam Speaker, uh, to uh, the claim that Mr Smith made uh, towards the end of his speech uh, around the current state of the public service compared uh, to that under the previous administration. Uh, under the previous administration, we saw the public service stripped to some uh, degree uh, and then, as I think the, the, the word that he was, uh, that, the minister, that the previous minister used, was then bloated, uh, bloated by a, a very extremely large expenditure on contractors, in order to, Madam Speaker, have uh, the allure of trimming down the public service. Uh, but in the end, Madam Speaker, the cost of running the public service uh, had ballooned or bloated, uh, in the previous speaker's language. Uh, to a point where it had got out of control. Yeah. Uh, we are being much more transparent about that by making sure that we invest in our public service in a transparent way and not hiding the fact that, that we've got these people working behind the scenes as contractors and we're doing that in a transparent way as opposed uh, to uh, the way that the previous administration had done, thing, had done things, Madam Speaker. Also, uh, there was another pot kettle black uh, moment uh, for, the, for the member and around um, uh, giving us a lecture about integrity. And I'm not going to go into that any further, Madam Speaker, or face the, the wrath of your ire. But having said that, I do think it's um, a little rich uh, for that member to, to stand in this uh, parliament with a straight face. I think you've got to give him some respect for that. Uh, but, but to try and give us a lecture on that. Madam Speaker, to the substance of this piece of legislation, uh, I want to say congratulations to uh, the Honourable Chris Hipkins for following through on a concern that I think the public has had for some time. I remember um, in a previous iteration, Madam Speaker, when I uh, was the opposition spokesperson uh, for state services, uh, when a prominent radio broadcaster was interviewing me about a particular instance where a chief executive had got quite a sizeable uh, pay increase. And I remember it um, very um, vividly because I was standing in a schoolyard at three o'clock and there was plenty of noise and I was trying to listen to what the questions were and it was giving me a hard time saying what are you guys going to do about it if you get into government? Well Madam Speaker this is exactly what we are doing about it. There, need, there needed to be a check and balance on the levels of pay of chief executives in the public service because there has been concern and that interview was back in 2015 uh, Madam Speaker for some time uh, because, and, and one of the key objectives of this government is to make sure that we can look after uh, low and middle income New Zealanders. Uh, and the juxtaposition of New Zealanders at the lowest end of the salary and wage scale struggling to make ends meet, while the government had little or no control on chief executives' pay, wasn't a good look uh, for the public. And, this, and, uh, and, and seriously, we, something needed to be done. And I think this piece of legislation puts in place the mechanisms where the government and the State Services Commission has a lot more oversight and control uh, over the levels of salary for the chief executives of our public services. So I want to congratulate uh, Minister Hipkins for getting this piece of legislation through this House um, uh, within 12 months of this coalition government um, getting into office, because I think it sends a very clear message that we will put our money where our mouth is when we say we're going to look after low and middle income New Zealanders. And we do have some levers that we can control in terms of what ch chief executives are paid. And they should be paid um, properly, um, but not excessively. Uh, and the government today, by passing this piece of legislation in its third reading, and I acknowledge 
uh, the support that it has got around the House, is showing leadership that something has had to change for those who are at the lowest end of the scale in terms of their pay and those at the very highest. Uh, and that is one of the fundamental objectives of this coalition government, and I want to congratulate Minister Hipkins and this government by making sure that could be done uh, within 12 months. I call the Honourable Jackie Dean. It is a little rich, Madam Speaker, to be...